Hello, my name is Blake Graham, and I've had the honor and privilege of being involved in the health and wellness industry now for 27 years, since I was in pre-med and was asked to translate for a nutritional company that was open in Japan. And I was impressed at so much of the incredible life-changing information that's out there that unfortunately doesn't make it into the hands of the average American. And I wanted to create this video to help share some of that with you because folks, the truth is today, there's a huge need, there's a growing crisis that is happening in America and actually around the world. And it's something that uh, I think some people don't even recognize it, how bad it is. And we wanted to talk today about some principles that we can put into place to help make a difference in the lives of people. Because folks, when you look at it today, one of the things that you'll see repeated over and over and over in society is that people are getting sicker than ever. So let's look at some of the statistics on what's actually happening with people getting sicker than ever before. And to start with that, I want to do a comparison between these statistics and technology because we see in society today that technology is getting better, but our health is getting worse. And I believe there is something we can do about it. If you look over the past, especially the past just uh, two, three decades, you've seen a huge change in technology. Instead of using maps or, or buying atlases to figure out where to go, we can now use GPS, which was much more, not only easier, but actually much more effective. Instead of going to the library and checking out dozens and dozens of books or buying encyclopedias and maybe having to buy an update from year to year, we can now access even more information on our smartphones. Instead of having to worry about long distance calls, we can actually have video chat with people around the world for free. And this is something we see technology has gotten easier, better, more effective than ever before. But why at the same time that technology has gotten better is that the diseases are on the rise? Why do we see more infertility or celiac disease, Crohn's disease, menopause, heart disease, cancer, autism, diabetes? arthritis, joint pain, MS or Parkinson's, and the list can go on and on and on. In fact, if you look at some of the statistics, one of the things that you see is we were never supposed to be this sick. In fact, according to Dr. Zach Bush, back in the 1960s, we only expected a child born to have a 4% chance of ever getting a chronic disease. Back in the 1960s, we only expected 4% of the children born at that time to ever get a chronic disease. Yet today, we know according to the RAND Corporation, who does statistics for Congress, that 60% of adults have at least one chronic disease and 42% of adults have two or more chronic disease. In fact, if you look at the top category of this with five or more chronic diseases, they take an average of 51 prescriptions a year. Well, folks, why is it that we see more and more people on prescription medication? Why is it that more and more people are getting sick and that this sickness has become the new norm? And if you look at what happened up to the 1990s, from the 1950s to the 1990s, you can blame a lot of that on nutritional deficiency. You see, as we've used the same farmland over and over and over and only replace some of those minerals, NPK typically, three minerals in chemical fertilizer, we only replace some of those minerals, that the other minerals go more and more deficient. And as they have gone down, we can track, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, we can actually track as the mineral deficiencies have gotten worse or the minerals have gone down in our food, that diseases has increased. But that's only up till the 1990s. From the 1990s to today, things really started to change. We have seen an alarming increase in disease. And if you look just at the 1990s to 2013, we're talking a 23 year span, we see globally a 41% increase in deaths from heart disease, according to the New England Journal of Medicine. If we look from 1996 to 2009, we see a 45% increase in asthma. People have had asthma for centuries, so why is it that we suddenly see a spike where we've almost increase 50%. In fact, if you look at inflammatory bowel diseases, and unfortunately the statistic doesn't go back to 1990s, it just goes to 1999. We're always nine years into the 90s. But from those, you can see just a, an increase in celiacs, Crohn's, IBS, ulcerative colitis. Inflammatory bowel disease are up 50%. I mean, think back to when we were children. Do we ever have people who experienced this? Did we even hear the word celiacs or Crohn's disease? And I had not. From 1997 to 2011, here, a 14-year window, we saw a 50% increase in food allergies in children. 
And again, that's not the beginning of the 1990s. That's also so partially through it. From 1990 to 2015, a 25-year span, a 250% increase in epilepsy, according to the Center for Disease Control. And that's not even the worst. From 1990 to 2010, 300% more of a diabetes. We have tripled diabetes in society today and it's not the way it should be and that's not the only thing more and more people are struggling to have kids in japan right now it's estimated one in six couples actually have problems with fertility and in the united states we've seen from 96 to 2018 300 percent more births from fertility treatments more people are needing to go to fertility treatments to be able to have a family and that's not the worst of it it gets even worse than that. 91 to 2015, 783% increase in deaths from Alzheimer's. And from the 1990s to 2018, this is one of the most alarming ones that, that to me underscores the crisis we're experiencing. And that is a 4,200% increase in autism. Again, think back to when we were children. Did we ever hear about autism? Did we hear about celiac? Did we hear about Crohn's disease? Did we have all of the diseases that we have today? And the answer is no. Diseases have been on the rise. And so you ask yourself, well, what's the difference between 1990s to today? Is it the food that's really changed? Because back in the 1990s, we had microwave popcorn and we have microwave popcorn today. We had microwaves and we have microwaves today. We had sugary cereal and sugary pop and we had Pop-Tarts and we had fast food and junk food and so many of the same eating habits today that we have back in the 1990s. The food choices haven't really changed. If anything, people try and eat healthier. It seems like there's been an increase in awareness and we're trying to do better. We're trying to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, but there's a problem with it. And the problem is the food isn't the same as it used to be. Even if you make the same food choices, if the quality of the food, and more importantly, if there have been additional things added to the food, that are causing a problem. Well, folks, we get more toxic exposure today than ever before, and it's damaging us. If you look according to the Environmental Protection Agency, in their list in 2013, there are 36 neurotoxic chemicals registered for use in agriculture in the United States, all of which can potentially cause acute and subacute toxicity. We've got 36 different neurotoxins that we're putting on our food, and it's damaging us, all of which can cause acute and subacute toxicity. It means things that happen right now, um, things that are going to happen long term. Folks, when we look at that, just one of these 36, glyphosate, has been shown to disrupt the beneficial gut bacteria that helps to create certain nutrients and help us absorb nutrients. And in fact, it not only disrupts this gut bacteria, but it leads to what's called the permeability or the breakdown of the intestinal wall and consequent expressions of autoimmune disease. And you see this happening more and more in the literature today. In fact, if you look at the graph chart and when you see an increase in the glyphosate on wheat versus how many people have celiac disease, you see a horrible correlation as we put more of these chemicals on there that it actually is not just more people with celiacs, but you actually see more deaths due to intestinal infection. And here you can see the red graph chart. The red line is the increase of glyphosate, and not on wheat this time, on corn and soy. So even if I'm trying to eat gluten-free, but I'm eating corn, there can be exposure to this. And it's not just it's not just digestion problems. Look at what's happened to autism. As autism has raised, risen, and you've seen a correlating, a correlating increase that happened first that we did with the exposure to glyphosate on our food. In fact, if you look at what's called the Pearson correlation coefficient, which says, how accurate is this? How well does this track with these two statistics lining up? And it's a 99, 0 0.99, a 99% correlation, folks. And it's not, just, it's not just autism in kids. For adults, it's dementia. And deaths from senile dementia that we say shown have risen so much. Look how that tracks since we've started to increase the glyphosates on, on our food. And what about diabetes? If you go back to the 1970s when people got, started to be scared away from fat and we introduced margarine and, and told everybody to use more statin drugs, well, the amount of fat that people have consumed has gone down considerably. The amount of statin drugs are through the roof. Number one selling drug in America and potentially throughout the world today. 
And we saw as that happened and people started to go to unnatural things, the trans fatty acid to get the fat out of their diet, the diabetes actually started to increase. But look what happened from the 1990s to today when we say the numbers have tripled. If you were to go on the pre-1993 trend, you see the green line there. But when we we see what actually happened when we introduced genetically modified crops and to that have started to put more glyphosate on her. And this one again is with the so uh, corn and with the soy. Folks, there's a reason why people are getting sick and there's something that has to be done about it. And it's not something that's just about your neighbor. I mean, think of it this way. Have you ever experienced any of these signs of nutritional deficiencies? Have you ever had an eyelid twitch? Have you ever had leg cramps? Have you ever had ringing in the ears or stiff shoulders or joint pain or cavities? If you've had these signs that I'm brushing my teeth and I still develop cavities, well, what is that a sign of? There's certain nutrients that you need in your bones, whether it's in your ear, in your jaw, in, the, in your knees, in your back. And if you're missing those, they start to break down. So if you're having multiple signs here, it can be the same nutritional deficiency. But if at the same time you've ever had signs of craving something sweet or waking up in the middle of the night to use the restroom or feeling hungry, even when you're physically full. Well, these can be signs of very different nutrition, nutritional deficiencies. I mean, think about it. If you're physically full and you go to the refrigerator to see what looks good, do you think we're missing calories? If you're physically full and you go up and say, let me check out the buffet line just one more time, right? Is it the calories that we're missing? And the answer is no. It's some of those trace nutrients. And in fact, it's different from the ones that we just saw when you can have hard tissue problems, joint pain, and bone pain. And there is a different set of nutritional deficiencies that actually leads to breakdown of how the brain is supposed to work. So if you've ever had times when you can't remember a specific word, that thing, you know that thing, that thing, or, or you get your phone out to call somebody, and when you get your phone out to call somebody, you, you can't remember who it is that you were going to call. Uh, and you're in the middle of a conversation, you can't remember what you were going to say, you can't remember what you were going to do that day. All of those things can be signs. And in fact, if you have more than one child and you look at your children, you look them right in the eye and you call them by the wrong name. Well, folks, that's a sign. It's not that you don't know their name, you probably gave it to them. It's that the, the neurons, if you order, the signal in the brain doesn't get to where it's supposed to go because there's a fray along uh, along this. We actually get a, a fray of what's called the myelin sheath and the signal goes somewhere else. How many of us experience that? How many of us would like to experience better memory, more concentration, the ability to think clearer, folks? And when you see already that you've had multiple signs here, that can be a, a big sign of a breakdown in the digestive problem. And there can be other signs that are very specific signs. Have you ever felt bloated? Have you ever had constipation or diarrhea or heartburn, acid reflux? If you've ever had those, those are signs that digestion's not working like it's supposed to. And this is a big deal. This is the number one reason, folks, when we mess up the door to the body, that we run out of things that we need, that we're not getting the nutrition from the food we need in order for our bodies to rebuild. I mean, think about it this way. When we go to sleep, our bodies go into repair mode. And if it goes into repair mode and you don't have enough nutrients, you get that leg cramp because the body says, oh, I'm trying to rebuild the bones. I don't have the nutrition. Let's borrow it from the muscles because the muscles aren't being used right now. And you get that leg cramp. Folks, it doesn't have to be that way. There's got to be something that we can do. And this was exactly what Mr. David Gilmore, the founder of Fiji Water, said. Now, Fiji Water, many of you know that that's the brand that was the fastest growing water in not just all of America, but all the world. It actually received a special award um, in business from Colin Powell, who was the Secretary of State at the time. We have seen amazing things when people take great water. And Mr. Gilmore, after the success of this, was asked to be a panelist at an American uh, Express luxury conference. They're talking about what's the world's greatest luxury with some of their best clients like Mercedes and BMW, you know, some of the, the, the kind of the, the companies that uh, deal with the wealthy. And everybody's talking about time freedom. And Mr. Gilmore says no. As the final panelist in four-day conference, he says, your own health is your greatest luxury in life. What good is your wealth, your possessions, and even your time if you don't have your health? How would you like to have time freedom and be stuck in a hospital bed? Is that freedom? Absolutely not. And he said that we've got to do something about it. And that's when he started his 12th, uh, his 12th adventure, his 12th startup as an entrepreneur, his 12th company. 
And that is actually what we're here to talk with you about today. Because if you take the right principles and put them into place, the body can do amazing things if you give it what it needs and help to get rid of the things it doesn't need, the things that are damaged. And we're going to use an analogy here because it's important that we do more than just trying to avoid the toxins. Now, a lot of people say, hey, what if we ate more organic? What if we avoided those chemicals? And those are fantastic strategies. We can eat gluten-free. We can eat organic. But when's the last time you had something that wasn't organic? Was it last year or was it last night? or maybe even today. I mean, it's great to eat organic, but it's difficult to do that for every single meal. And if you have food that wasn't organic, what, did it, what does that mean? Some of those chemicals could have been on there that damage digestion, that cause all of this problem and inflammation. So, so I want to use the analogy as if damaged digestion was like flat tires on a car. And if the tires are flat, what do you do to fix it? You can't just say, let's not run over any more nails, right? Let's just avoid any more additional toxins. I mean, that's nice. That's not a bad strategy. It just does not fix the damage that has already occurred. And this is the principles. We're talking about some core principles to help. And we're going to use the analogy of fixing the flat tire. If you want to fix a flat tire, you have to pull the nails out. You have to patch the hole. And you have to fill it up with air. Those three things. You can do two of those three things. You say, oh, I've got two-thirds of it done, and it will be inadequate because you're still going to have a flat tire. Imagine you leave the nails in there, and we try to patch the hole over the nails and fill it up with air. It's not going to be the same. It's going to go flat again. Or what if we patch the hole and uh, pull out the nails, but we don't fill it up with air? Well, it's not going to be the same, folks. You want optimal health. It's like fixing a flat tire. You've got to do all three of those things. You've got to get rid of the toxins, pull them out of the body, help to clean up inflammation. It's almost like two different types of nails, if you will. Then we need to repair the damage that's been done, and then we need to fill it up with air, or the building blocks, if you would, that our body naturally needs to be healthy. And when we talk about pulling the nails out, it's the toxins and inflammations that we want to detox the body. See. And it's not just agricultural chemicals. They're a big deal, folks, but there's also a lot of processed food, harmful food additive. There's pollutant in our air and pollutants in our water, and it causes inflammation in the body. And inflammation in the body, when you get that, it's like congestion. Have you ever been stuck in traffic on a freeway, off a freeway? Well, if you're stuck in traffic, you're not getting a lot of new cars into traffic, and you're not getting a lot of cars out of traffic. It's like when you have inflammation in the body and the blood is stagnated, you get fewer toxins out and fewer nutrients in. Your body's in stagnation and it's not working like it's supposed to be. And in fact, if you look at, at information on the Harvard Health Letter, they show research is showing that chronic inflammation may be the common factor in many diseases. And it doesn't stop there. In fact, more recently, from John Hopkins Health Review, they actually list a number of diseases that chronic inflammation is linked to, including Alzheimer's, including arthritis, including lupus and cancer, and diabetes and heart disease and stroke and depression. Do we want any of that for us or for our loved ones, for our friends, for our neighbors? No. And so many doctors talk about the list being even bigger, whether it's, it's MS, whether it's uh, whether it's fibromyalgia, whether it's uh, infertility, or whatever the case may happen to be, PCOS, when the body has too much inflammation, it's not functioning like it's supposed to. So what can we do? Well, folks, this is where we've got to pull the nails out. Our body just need to clean toxins out, and not just out of our colon. We've got to clean them out of our liver. We've got to clean them out of our kidneys. We have to get the garbage out of our cells. And fortunately, there's a way we can do that. And it starts with an amazing substance that has an incredible negative ionic charge that actually can pull up to 39 times its weight in toxins out of our digestive tract. Now, it doesn't absorb into the blood, but you take this amazing calcium bentonite clay and in the digestive tract, whether it's uh, food that has gotten bad, whether it's agricultural chemicals, whether it's it's bad bacteria. These things that are harmful for the body often have a positive charge. And this amazing negative charge can actually uh, attract and capture up to 39 times its weight in toxins and send it out. And that's not the only thing it can do. But we have more that will help clean up information and detox the body. And this is where we started with Wakaya Perfection. Back on the island of Wakaya, 
off of the coast of Fiji, an island that is certified organic that Mr. Gilmorefeld inspired not only to purchase but protect and not let chemicals on it. We found that um, when he went back to the original strains that they could find on the island, that they found ginger and turmeric that grown on the island was three times stronger in ginger oils and five times stronger in curcumins. And we know in the medical journals, there's actually currently over 8,300 articles on ginger and turmeric that talk about its anti-inflammatory properties or circulation improvements or immune support or more. In fact, in fact, these are some research that inspired Mr. Gilmore that says, this is how we're going to make a difference. We're going to start here. And if you remember back in Gilligan's Island that uh, Ginger was the movie star, well, when it comes to helping clean out the body and helping to repair, that's exactly right, that there's a movie star. And it starts with Ginger, and its friend is turmeric. In fact, Ayurvedic medicine talks about Ginger and turmeric together. But there's more that we can do. If you want full spectrum, detox and inflammation, there's some other amazing herbs like the hawthorn berry that not only helps with circulation, can actually help the body clean out the uh, capillaries or the small arteries and the kidneys. How many of us would love better kidney function, right? Being able to eliminate toxins better and have more energy. How about getting, getting lactic acid out of our muscles so we don't get as many sore muscles or getting garbage out of our cells? And that's one of the things that this, this mineral, selenium methionine, can help with when you take it because it can activate something called the glutathione, which is an enzyme in the body that helps with the detox and actually helps with even more. We'll talk about it in a minute. Rhodiola is fantastic at helping to, your body to be able to naturally balance something called cortisol. And many of you have heard of people having a cortisone shot, right? You've got inflammation running amok. We want to reduce that. We're going to take a medication, something called cortisone. What if we can naturally control the cortisol levels and help our body be healthier? Or milk thistle or dandelion root to help clean toxins out of our, our liver. Or astaxanthin, which is so incredible as a natural anti-inflammatory. I have so many people that just even putting all of these things together in just a few days see such a world of difference that it's amazing. But that's only the first thing. We want to get rid of the toxins. We want to get rid of all the toxins we can. But then we need to patch the hole. And we're... That's the analogy we're using for digestion repair. We need to be able to fix digestion because if digestion is poor, your health, unfortunately, is going to be poor. It's going to be hard to rebuild if you can't get the nutrients in because digestion is poor. And unfortunately, what we see is there are more and more people with dam damaged villi. It's in a healthy villi, which is in your small intestine where most of the absorption happens. I mean, you and I, when we get hungry, we don't take our shoes and socks off and put our feet in the dirt and say, ooh, that's how I'm getting my nutrition. No, we eat, and our stomach breaks down the food. And in fact, the stronger the stomach acid, the more it breaks down the food. And people have heard of acid reflux. Acid reflux is never too much uh, stomach acid. It's always acid in the wrong place. That's the reflux, right? And when you've got good stomach acid, it can keep out the bacteria from living in your stomach so you're not getting that acid reflux in the first place. But going back to this, when we've broken down the food in the stomach and it gets down to the small, to the small intestine, that's where it's supposed to be to get absorbed. It's like little microscopic finger-like productions, if you would, called villi. And when they're healthy, there's lots of space in between them, you get great absorption. When you get bloated you feel like you you know you're, you're you're not feeling like you should it's there's some stretching in there some there's some inflammation going on well those are damaged villi and damaged villi typically can be a loss of about 70 percent of the surface area you're not going to feel as good you're not going to do as well we're not going to get as many of the good things in and the bad things out and when it gets really bad folks how many have heard of people with Crohn's yeah you can get scar tissue instead of villi and absorbing through car, scar tissue is extremely hard. And not only that, um, sometimes it actually causes holes that's called leaky gut where it gets in between there. And uh, you can actually get toxins that are into the blood. And this is something many people have heard about this leaky gut. Um, but actually looking at the pictures of this on a cellular level is very enlightening. There's something called the aphelial cells. And the aphelial cells are in our digestive tract. It's, um, it's like one cell thick, but there are places in the digestive tract, it's one cell thick. And if you look on the, the picture on your left, you see in that picture the cell membranes are up tight against each other. They call it a tight junction, but it's tight against each other where you don't get things in between it. Think of it like um, 
you know, people have locked arms or it's a fence post that are uptight. And when some of these chemicals are in there, they're breaking down that tight junction. From the left to the right can be only 16 minutes of exposure to some of these agricultural chemicals. 16 minutes. And you get a breakdown of the tight junction, and that's when you start to get that leaky gut. Well, if you're going to repair the damage, do you know the number one herb in all of the medical literature about helping with digestion is ginger? And this is absolutely amazing. And the people that uh, I'm working with in Japan absolutely love this because adding some high impact ginger, something where you've got enough, enough of those gingerols to make a difference, where you don't have the chemicals in there, it can make such a big difference that people can actually help the body repair the damage to the digestive tract. And that's why I absolutely love ginger. But ginger's not the only one. In fact, when it comes to repairing the damage or taking it from the damaged villi to the healthy villi, there's two other strategies we do. And one of it is we want to redox or repair oxidation. Think of this as fixing it. Um, if you've seen people with age spots, right? Why is it if our skin rebuilds every 28 days that you actually have age spots? It's because the DNA has been damaged. We want to reverse that. There's something called redox, which stands for reversing or repairing or sometimes they actually call reducing um, the chemical name in chemistry uh, that's the opposite of oxidation is called re reduction right uh, but you take this redox to repair that damage and that's one of those things that selenium methionine can do because it's the number one mineral needed for that glutathione peroxide, uh, peroxide that is the enzyme that helps the body to rebuild damage to the soft tissue glutathione peroxidase, that incredible enzyme that if it works like it's supposed to, we can take tissue that's been damaged and actually reverse even genetic damage. Did you know that? You know there's something called epigenetics that genes can change in the presence or absence of nutrition. Well, what if we could repair that damage? And that's why when you've got great glutathione levels, great levels of selenium, we can actually see age spots go away. And there's another incredible one in Mother Nature Many people know about fish oil and how great it is. Do you know in Mother Nature, if you look at salmon, it's pink because there's a natural antioxidant in salmon. And the salmon get it from eating the krill, and the krill get it from eating, uh, from actually eating the seaweed and kelp and, 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 and different plants that grow that produce this incredible antioxidant called astaxanthin. See, in Mother Nature, the way the good Lord designed the planet, when it's hot outside, plants can't run into the shade. When there's a, a bug or an invader or something that's attacking it, they can't run away. So they have to produce something from the inside to deal with the stress. And that's actually where astaxanthin comes from. And it's so powerful. I mean, you can see it's uh, actually uh, more than 5,000 times stronger than vitamin C as an antioxidant. And it's in Mother Nature. And this is a fantastic one to help with that. But there's more. Hyaluronic acid, many people have seen for use in skin care. What you probably didn't know is the research where we're selling that just like it helps with, with the skin repairing, if you can take uh, hyaluronic acid that's designed for the inside and get it inside, it can help the digestive tract repair as well. And that's why so many people see a difference in their skin when they use it on the inside because digestion, it's like the, the colon, if you would, is tied to the skin. And that's why you don't feel good and people break out in acne. You can get people with eczema, all sorts of things going wrong when digestion is really bad. But it doesn't stop there. There's even something that's made on the island of Wakaya that's grown there, a dila oil. And this is one that's a nut. And this one is used in the island of Fiji when people have ulcers. It's used for so many things, um, really maladies, if you would, people get sick with. And it's a wonderful, natural, uh, essential fatty acid, just rich in that. But those are some of the things that can help repair the damage to the inside that go fantastic with ginger. But there's also more. There's something called the Bohr effect. And the Bohr effect is... If, what if we can wake up the cell? What if we can have the cell do more, um, work faster, right? We're going to get faster repair with that. And if we can do something to affect that, that's called the Bohr effect after a German scientist, but we can get increased activity and increased healing at the cellular level. How many people would like that? Well, this is actually one of the benefits we talked about, about that calcium bentonite clay. And I have seen that when... Uh, when I had a sprained ankle and it wasn't healing that I actually did a clay pack on the outside when I learned about that. And as it pulled the toxins out, not only 
uh, did it feel much better. But I mean, it was amazing. I'd been in pain for two weeks, one application and the pain was gone. And many people find that uh, if you add a little bit extra of that calcium bentonite clay, because you have problems, as you're pulling those toxins out, you actually feel soothing and you're helping the body to heal if you can increase that cellular activity, that bore effect. And I love calcium bentonite clay as a great strategy to try to help accomplish this. Now, after we can repair the damage, the next step is to fill up the tire with air. Okay, we pulled the nails out, we patched the hole, we're gonna fill it up with air. Well, how does that work in an analogy with the body? And we're gonna talk about something called essential nutrients. These are the building blocks that our bodies need to be healthy. And if you look at essential nutrients, I want you to think of this. We're going to go back to the analogy of remember the, the car with the, the flat tires. But how many of us have ever driven a car without an engine, without brakes, without tires or transmission or without a steering wheel? Can you imagine Ford or Toyota in their factory? They, they say, oh, we're out of steering wheels. We'll go ahead, just release this batch. We'll catch up on the next batch. No, it's essential. If you don't have those components, your body, your car's not going to work like it's supposed to, right? It's not like just not having GPS. You can still drive without GPS. But these are things that are absolutely critical. And by the same token, we have essential vitamins, essential minerals, essential amino acids, essential fatty acids. Nearly 100 different nutrients are classified as essential in the human body. And when you don't have them, you get sick. You know, how many of us have heard of dog ears? One year for us is seven years for a dog. And that's because in the 1950s, the 1960s, days of lasting old yeller, dogs lived to be maybe 10 or 11 years old. We were living to be in our 70s. That's easy enough, seven to one. But how many of us know somebody with a dog today that's, been, uh, that's lived longer, like 13 years or 14 years or 16 years or 18 years? You know, a long-lived dog. I actually had a lady in Kyoto, Japan, who had a dog that was 26. Now, you do the math on that, 26 times seven. That's 182 in dog years, folks. Well, why is it that our dogs are living longer? And the number one thing is the food. We used to feed them table scraps. Everybody knows you go out to eat, you have food left over, you put it in a doggy bag, take it home, right? Well, who eats that food? It's not Fido or Spot now. It's, yeah, you and I. What do we give our dogs that are the healthiest? And the answer is dog food that has, by legal requirement, all of the essential nutrients that a dog needs to be healthy. If you don't put additional nutrients in, you can't call a dog food. We can't take the steak that you and I love and eat and put it in a can and call it dog food unless we add extra nutrients. And we will add 40 nutrients to our dog food, but there's only 13 in human infant formula. That's a problem. We need to get the same building blocks. If you were to, to design the ideal people food where you got all of the nutrition in, that's what we're going to have nearly 100 different nutrients. Now, there was a time we thought there were 12. There was a time that people talked about 28 or maybe maybe even 42. But today, science shows that there's nearly 100. And there's actually probably more that science doesn't even know yet. Because just like we went from minerals to trace minerals, uh, just uh, there can be almost, you could think of them as trace vitamins, the phytochemicals, the phytonutrients, those small compounds, the catagens, the, the extra antioxidants that are in plants that are gonna make an amazing difference for us as well. So if we're going to put all of that together, one of the things I want you to understand, there's a difference between vitamins and minerals and one of the problems we talked about it before, what's happened in agriculture, we're using the same fields, we're getting mineral deficiencies. Minerals are the elements uh, that are listed in a periodic chart. The blue ones that you see on the screen are all of those that are naturally occurring in the human body. And we don't know what all of them do, but we know at least 60 are essential and it's very important that you give your body the the all of the essential nutrients and it's great that we found one place that's an ancient deposit uh, back in the the time of the dinosaurs if you would long thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago we have an ancient deposit that when you extract these put these minerals in, in water it can actually, as they evaporate, pull the minerals out and you see this amazing, it's almost like frosting that appears on this, this humic shell and it has so rich in minerals. And this is one of those things that can make a huge difference in your health. Because you see how it works when we need minerals and these are the things in the soil, right? Spinach doesn't, doesn't create iron, it absorbs iron. But if you don't have good bacteria that's breaking down the iron in the soil, and if there wasn't iron in the soil anyways, 
then the plants can't absorb it. And when we eat the plants that haven't absorbed it, we're going to get deficiencies. That's why, you know, spinach the way it was supposed to be back in the days of Popeye, right? And everybody knows Popeye is strong to the finish because he eats the spinach, right? Everybody knows that uh, Popeye loves spinach, great iron, but spinach in those days was red almost up to the leaf. The stalk was red. How many of us see good spinach that there's no redness at all? Yeah. In fact, back in 1990, they saw uh, they looked at studies in supermarkets, and they actually found that 95% of the spinach in U.S. supermarkets, they couldn't find any detectable levels of iron. It's a problem here. So we need to be able to get those extra nutrients, those essential nutrients back in the body. And to do that, to help us do that, we also have a few things. If nutrients are the building blocks, we have a few coaches. These are the ones that direct the direct how our body works, hormones or certain body functions. And there are certain herbs that are known as adaptogens that actually help if these body functions or hormones are running too high, uh, that they can bring it down. And if they're running too low, that they can bring it up. They help the body adapt, right? High or low, you get back to normalizing it. And two of the well, most amazing ones, we've already talked about rhodiola. Another one is ashwagandha. In fact, I had a friend, uh, Owen McKibben, who's actually been on the cover of uh, Men's Health 17 different times. I mean, he is absolutely amazing and was recently on there, um, you know, in his uh, early 50s, again, in the magazine because he just looks so good. But he talks about his friends that are formulators that just for ashwagandha, you're often paying, you know, $40 a month, which is the price that you can get actually both of these and even more when you get it in the right combination. But but everybody's heard of thyroid and whether it's Graves or Hashimoto's or you know when the thyroid's too low or the thyroid's too high. Ashwagandha is one of those that's incredible at helping the thyroid be more balanced. And not just the thyroid, we're talking the adrenals, we're talking blood sugar, we're talking stress and inflammation. And even it even impacts hormones like testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. How many would like better hormonal levels? And if you do, adaptogens can help and that's when we're putting those essential nutrients in we want to give it some of those added nutrients to help make a difference in how the body works and to put it all together we have something called the gt core started with ginger and uh, turmeric or if you would mr gilmore and a gentleman that became the co-founder of wakaya perfection that mr gilmore started that took it from from direct cells when he's uh, was adver actually uh, on hs uh, the home shopping network hsn and they loved it. It was in the top th top ten three years in a row because people would would not only buy it when it was being broadcast, but they would use it and then want more of it, and they'd buy it even when it wasn't broadcast. Fantastic! But to that ginger and turmeric, Miss uh, Todd Smith is the one that added the clay. And when you've added more things to help the body detox, and you put it all together, we get better results. It stands for ginger and turmeric. But again, you could say Gilmore, Mr. Gilmore and, and Todd. But the GT core is the core of how we do this. And it's it's actually here, uh, high impact, convenient nutrition that's going to help with the pulling those nails up, getting rid of the inflammation, detoxifying the body. It's going to, designed to help our bodies repair the digestive tract. It's designed to help give us the complete essential nutrients, all of those close to 100 different essential nutrients we need. And it, and how it works is there's two powders that you mix together. One's a coconut flavored, one's a mango flavored. Together they taste fantastic. They taste great on their own separately too. And then we have a little packet, a little packet that uh, has some ginger, turmeric, uh, a multivitamin, fantastic multivitamin, and this amazing new essential fatty acid product that has the astaxanthin, that has the hyaluronic acid, that has the the prime never been exposed to oxygen fish oil and that even has selenium in there to help protect against that soft tissue damage. This is the core of what we do. And we invite you to experience it for yourself. But there's more to what we do than that. There's more to things we can help with. Many people are familiar with CBD oil. They're familiar with things like essential oils. They're familiar with the ketogenic diet. And these are add-ons to the core. If you can help with those core principles first, then all of the add-ons are going to do better. And I mean, what's the point of just using one thing? Uh, let's say you are able to reverse, you're able to re reverse a breakdown in your heart and then you die from cancer. I mean, that is such a waste and such a tragedy. We want to help everything be healthy and that's why we start with the core. 
on what we do. But if you want to get the best results, you can add other things onto that. You can add other and other products based on what your individual needs are. You can uh, add on the liquid clay product for that extra clay. Like I said, I love that extra clay. You can add on some ketogenic products, which aren't just good for weight loss. Many people heard about the ketogenic diet for weight loss, but incredible for brain support, for blood sugar, for energy, for hormonal support. And in fact, there's a booklet that I had the opportunity to do with Dr. Randy Lindell, who's, who's been doing keto probably about a decade longer than most people have ever heard of it. And it changed his life. He and his wife weren't able to have kids. They adopted some fantastic kids. But then when they got on keto and their hormones uh, became balanced, suddenly they had within one year two sons. People even think they're twins. And it's just amazing the difference that it makes when you can give the body the right nutrients. They're ketogenic products. We've got some amazing ones. We can take additional uh, minerals. And we've got some incredible joint support. In fact, our keto fuel, and, and we've recently added on a product that has oh, uh, tw over 20 different organic uh, herbs, superfoods, uh, vegetables, things that you'd want your kids to eat. but there's too many chemicals in society and you're not even sure buying these vegetables if you're able to get them chemical free. But how about if you could take your keto shake, which is a high fat shake, a great tasting shake and add some of these uh, greens to it where you can actually now get better nutrition and it tastes fantastic. I don't know if you've ever tried greens on their own, but combined with this amazing tasting keto fuel, it's like the two things are better together than they ever were by themselves. And uh, not only that, we've got some uh, some great thermogenic products like our burn that actually helps your body get into ketosis better by producing something called dopamine, where it's not that you feel full, you feel satisfied. That's what dopamine helps you do. And we even have some exogenous ketone product in the Keto Fizz that if you want quick energy, if you want to help get into ketosis quicker, get through that keto flu, if you're having any of those maybe signs of low blood sugar. This is fantastic because ketones don't require insulin to work and it's like a second backup energy mechanism. You know, Think of our bodies as hybrid, right? Um, if the gasoline's gone, we can still use electricity and it's a cleaner energy and that's one of the reasons that I want you to get that booklet, Is Keto Right For Me? And, uh, and read up on some of the research with Dr. Randy Lindale. Read up on some of the thousands and thousands of articles that you're seeing in medical journals, but that's a great add-on there. In fact, on just the exogenous ketones last year, um, just over a year ago, we saw 865 articles in PubMed.gov, hundreds of articles in PubMed.gov on exogenous ketones today and some of the benefits that they can help with, including energy and cravings, blood sugar support, and more. And people have heard about, have heard about CBD oil. Well, folks, when you look at a good product, you know what makes a good product and the answer is good results. The best results come from the best products or another way to say that is the best products are those that get the best results. And if you're going to use one, one of the things that people start with is great ingredients. That's fantastic. But the chef matters, don't they? Right? You see cooking shows, the Iron Chef, where, where you have the same ingredients and you have very different recipes. Well, folks, it's the same way. You take good ingredients and they actually do a process to energize these, take some of the healing frequencies of the human body and fit these to it. And that's one of the reasons if you've tried other CBD oil products that when you, they try the ones from Wakaya with that extra step in it, it's not just high quality, TH free, all natural USA grown uh, ones with great levels of the CBD oil that are actually in it, but it now fits the body better. And when you get shoes that fit better, not just your size, they fit, it's more effective, it's more comfortable. And that's what we want to. We want to help you get better results. And we have this amazing product. If you were with me here in person, I would share this with you and invite you to rub some on your neck, um, to rub some right on the, the temples next to your eyes. Because as you get penetration of this amazing essential fatty acid esters, and those are some of the nutrients that our skin and our, our eyes, our, our soft tissue needs are essential fatty acid, and absorbs through the skin. Uh, they show a topical absorption of 94% in some of the uh, medical literature and some of the research that's been done, but as it absorbs into the skin, not only can you help relieve inflammation and pain, but you can increase circulation, and better circulation equals better healing. Nutrition times circulation equals healing, so we want to help people have better circulation. You see this over and over. In fact, the ingredient in this was in the Journal of uh, Rheumatology. And when they did it, they tested uh, people on 60 different people 
Um, and in every single measurement they did, whether it was pain levels, whether it was the range of motion, going up and, and downstairs, sitting down in a chair, standing up, or how quickly they walk, whatever the measurement was, every single person saw results in every single measurement. And we just invite you to try it for yourself. If, you're, if you can get a hold of this, uh, somebody in person, often just trying a, a one time. We can help people see a difference, especially if we're combining it with our essential oils. That we do the exact same thing we talked about, that energizing, that frequency fit, if you would, to make it work better with the body. In fact, so many times I will have people try just one drop of this peppermint and rub it in your hands, take it, smell that in, and then put it on the back of your neck and wow, as the capillaries open up and you get better circulation and your mind becomes clearer, oftentimes the heart opens up too. And that's what I love to make sure we make a difference. Folks, it's about making a difference, making a difference first. So we invite you to experience that difference for yourself. We invite you to, we invite you to try it for yourself and see. Because folks, when you give the body what it needs, it'll do amazing things. And then as you see the difference for yourself, please, let's help make a difference in the world. So many people out there are suffering and they don't need to be. So many people are out there that are sick and don't want to be. So many people are praying for a loved one. And I believe the good Lord designed our bodies to heal. But we need to help it by giving it the right things and get rid of the wrong things. Pulling the nails out, patching the holes, filling it up with that. That simple analogy describes our approach at helping the world be healthier. I want to thank you so much for your time and wish you all the blessings in life as you help to make a difference in the lives of other people. Thank you, everyone. God bless.